Today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. BetterHelp is an online therapy platform where you get to fill out a questionnaire about yourself, what you're looking for in a therapist, and then they match you based on the criteria that you give. Now, the online portion can be text messaging, it can be group calls, it can also even be phone call or like a, a regular Zoom call. So I personally have heavily utilized BetterHelp over the last little bit here, and that is because if you did not know, I lost my mom to addictions and two grandmas from natural causes in less than three months, four months. And that was traumatizing. Then on in January, my husband had been assaulted. It resulted to, in a brain trauma. So there was a lot of stress and feelings there. And I'm dealing with infertility. So I'm dealing with a lot. And a lot of people in my personal life often say, how do you keep going? How do you continue to film YouTube videos, go to work full time and still have time for hobbies and fun and all that sort of stuff. And honestly, it comes down to getting the right tools from a professional and BetterHelp is a great place to get that. If you want to try out BetterHelp, there is gonna be a link in the pinned comment as well as in the description. This will give you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp and you can join over 4 million people on this app. BetterHelp, I want to personally thank you for sponsoring this channel as well as for making a platform that allows me in my busy lifestyle have a conversation with a therapist in a vehicle on my lunch break. It's a lifesaver and it means a lot. Go use better help. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a video on what to do when the snow first leaves. When it first exits the ground surface, you can't get to planting yet, um, but you're itching to get stuff done in the garden. I'm gonna give you some tools, particularly for your soil, so you can have a happier, healthier soil in the future. Uh, therapy for your soil. <laughs> These are, sometimes even mistakes that people make or ignore when it comes to the snow first leaving your property. So regardless of what you're gardening in, containers, raised beds, in ground, you name it, the soil, once that initial bit of snow comes off is first off, incredibly wet, and secondly, cold. The problem with this is that we can't just go in and start planting. We can't just go in and transplant, not to mention even if we have high tunnels, low tunnels, cold frames, you name it, we need that soil to warm up first off. We need it to dry out, and we'll get into that reasoning here in a little bit. But thirdly, our last frost date, unless you're going to heat these cold, uh, these tunnels, or if you're going to be throwing it's just not possible. So your last frost date, generally speaking, is way past the snow disappearance. I can't put anything in the garden without protection or heat until end of May, beginning of June. My last frost date is June 10th. So it is like way out there. So the snow soil from the space that you're not too concerned about growth in and put it onto the garden or put it onto the lawn, whatever you're trying to grow with. The reason for this is because this year very likely is going to be a drought year. We didn't get much moisture last year, so our soils were kind of in a deficit and a negative when it came to water accumulation. When we think of water and soil, it's kind of like a rechargeable battery. You put the energy in and it stores up, but slowly as that battery is used, it trickles down. And unless there's an input, such as a full charge, if there's just a little trickle every once in a while, it'll just continue to deplete if it never gets refilled right to the top. And depending on how much moisture you got during the winter, which I can almost guarantee you, you didn't get enough because that is the drought map for Canada, uh, the drought map for the United States, it just doesn't look pretty. So put the moisture that you can get onto your soil surfaces every stinking moment you can. It's very important. Number two, and if you take nothing away from this video except for this one tip, it is do not walk on your soil or your lawn or anything you ever want to grow something in. 
Seriously, no joke. If you've got raised beds, don't stack pots on top of it. Don't add to that bed. Do not, in under any circumstance, put anything on top of the soil that'll squish it. The reason for this is because during the winter time, we can walk across a lawn, we can walk across a, a garden, we can stack pots because our soil has porosity. And inside that porosity, there's nutrients, there's water, and there's air. In the fall, your cell structures freeze. So it almost kind of makes like a building structure inside of the soil. And it's such an intense structure because of the freezing of water. There are entire industries that will only work on soil or in and around soil because of environmental reclamation laws when it is frozen. So the forestry industry is one and actually the oil industry is another. There's many times in circumstances where they're moving machinery across the land, that sort of thing. Spring breakup is why they call it spring breakup. So they won't drive it on the spring and if it rains, they will be told they cannot go on it because once you compact a soil from traffic, equipment, foot, animal, kid, your mistake of putting something on top of it, that will over time cause that porosity space to just collapse and disappear, making a hard pan in some circumstances or just a soil that doesn't have porosity. Now porosity, macro porosity versus micro porosity, two different things, but the macro porosity um, in particular has air in it and when we collapse it, we, we reduce the amount of oxygen in our soil systems, which not only affects our plant roots, fun fact, plant roots actually do uptake oxygen. I know it's wild, it's crazy, but it's true. And microbes. So the exudates that are released from the plant attract microbes. The microbes come in and they decompose the nutrient around that root system, the rhizosphere, so that it can be uptaken by that plant. However, if there's no oxygen there, the plant can put out as much exudate as it wants. Ultimately speaking, there's not enough air in there for the buggers to survive and thrive, unless if it's an anaerobic bacteria. And then in that case, it's something you very likely do not want and it'll smell kind of rotten. That's a sign of anaerobic, meaning no oxygen present. So please, 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 please do not walk on your lawn do not walk on your garden. This includes pets. Number three. Now this one can be used for a number of different reasons. First, it can be used for treating potential bacterial or bug problems, uh, flea beetles, soil borne bug problems. It can also be used to treat weeds, uh, particularly noxious weeds that haven't completely taken over the space and or just seeded weeds that you, you know you have issues with. If you're establishing a new garden bed on a space that was previously grass or some sort of plant, and also to get you in the garden faster. This will just essentially help with the soil conditioning, the temperature of it, to allow you to put your seeds in because if you watch my video on soil temp and what temp plants need to germinate in, I mentioned that you can get like the thermometer to put in the soil to determine when it's actually time to plant your plants outside. To speed this process up, you could use this method and that is solarization. Now I have a whole video on solarization, so I'm not gonna get into too much of how it's done. Just rest assured it is not simply just throwing on clear plastic and calling it a day. There is some thought that should go into what type of plastic you're using, how snug it should be to the ground, if you should add moisture previous to it. It's like there's a little bit of science there. So go check out that video if it's something you're interested in. But solarization is definitely one of those organic gardening tools that work. Now, I don't advocate for sterilizing soil. I am a I actually despise people who put soil in microwaves or ovens or leave bags of soil in the sun because sterile soil is a dead soil. That is the only time you could maybe say it was dirt. However, when it comes to solarization, particularly solarization that is connected to a soil system that will not heat up. So a raised bed that is higher or a raised bed that's connected to the earth or an in-ground bed that is obviously connected by surrounding soil, we have microbes all in around that space. The accepted 
regeneration time frame it takes for bacterias and bugs and critters to kind of come back into that soil profile if it's been sterilized or you know spayed, uh, sprayed with pesticides oddly enough is 48 to 72 hours after kind of sterilizing the soil everything's back to normal and that is because microbes uh, they multiply very, very quickly. It's kind of shocking actually. And that is how they recolonize that space so, so fast. So do keep that in mind. Now, obviously if the bad bugs, the bad weeds or critters are outside of the bed area, you might want to solarize just a little bit farther than that because those weeds and bugs will recolonize into the garden if you just kind of do the garden space. So keep that in mind. And the last one is to start testing your soil temps. So I mentioned this in my soil temp video, but every seed has a set kind of germination temperature that they prefer and some like a cooler soil. And if you can get the seeds in at the right temp, meaning the cooler temps when necessary, you tend to get a plant that is less leggy and stronger if it's being germinated in the conditions that it needs. Or on the other side of it would be for sunflowers and corn, for example, they like a warmer soil. So if you held off and waited till that soil warmed up, then you would know it's time to plant. Now keep in mind, we don't want slopping wet soil regardless of how warm it is. Most cases, if the if the soil's wet, it's gonna be on the cooler side anyway, so I'm not too, too worried about that one. And then obviously you wanna make sure that all your other soil prep is done before you put your seeds in, but we can get into that in a separate video. Thanks for watching. How do you keep your garden green thumb going when you can't quite plant outside? You've got everything started indoors. Let me know in the comments down below and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.